Hello, everyone. My name is Franklin Velasquez, and today we're going to be talking about introduction to SUO, uh, SUO3 AutoML with Python. Um, just to give me an idea, who's familiar here with uh, AutoML or automatic machine learning? Is anyone? Okay. Okay. What about with uh, the library SUO? Okay. Okay. So a few people know. Okay. So today I want to do a brief introduction to SUO3 and then a brief introduction to um, automatic machine learning. And, and then we're going to be doing um, an AutoML tutorial in Python as well as uh, Flow. Um, so as the introduction to SUO3, uh, this is a, a fully open source distributing memory machine learning platform SUO3 is a fully open source distributed in memory machine learning platform. It has um, it can be integrated with uh, big ecosystems such as Hadoop uh, and also Apache Spark. And to add a little bit more to this, uh, we also have the product co called um, S2O uh, uh, Sparkling Water, which is a combination of Spark and H2O. Um, we also have the a very flexible interface. We have uh, integration with R, Scala, Java, SUO Flow, and what we're going to be doing today, Python. Um, it, it provides uh, very fast and smart algorithms, and I will be talking about them uh, shortly. It has um, uh, very provides very good performance because of the distributed in-memory computing uh, platform, uh, and also the distributed algorithms. It also provides um, highly or in rapid model deployment. SUO allows you to convert the models that you built um, to either plain old Java objects or POJOs and um, model object optimized, which are also um, known as MOJOs. And they are very, um, they are very portable, so they are very easy to deploy. Uh, we also have the uh, uh, GPU enablement. Um, most of the neural networks um, work much faster with GPUs uh, than CPUs. And also, uh, SUO provides a cloud integration. Uh, we can, you can integrate it with Amazon Web Service, um, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure. Um, so why SUO3 for Python and machine learning? So one is the speed. Um, you have a very fast training and inferencing. Uh, the algorithms are very accurate, um, it's very scalable, and it's very easy. And we will see this uh, with the AutoML today. So some of the um, algorithms that we provide are, um, are shown in here. The statistical learning or statistical analysis, uh, which includes uh, penalized linear systems. This includes um, general linear models with um, L1 and L2 uh, regressions, and also um, provides a combination of both, which is the elastic net. Uh, uh, we also have in the statistical analysis the uh, naive Bayes um, algorithm. And then in the decision tree ensembles, we have distributed random forest, gradient boosting machines, and extreme gradient boostings, or more commonly known as XGBoost. We also provide uh, stacking or stacked ensembles, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this uh, uh, later on as we go into depth. We also have um, the AutoML, which is what we're going to be doing today. And for neural networks, we have both um, deep neural networks, uh, such as in a multi-layer perception, and also uh, for deep learning, we have uh, convolutional neural networks, but you have to be uh, uh, with the GPU enabled to be used to use that one. And on the unsupervised learning, we have uh, clustering for k-means. We also have dimensionality reduction, such as uh, principal component analysis or PCA, and also uh, generalized low-rank models. And this is just an extension of the idea of uh, PCA. Um, and then we also have aggregator, which creates smaller data sets from larger data sets. Um, and the last two are anomaly detections. We have auto-encoders, auto 
which find uh, outliers using nonlinear dimensionality reduction. And the last one, terms embedding, um, is for the word to vec, which means uh, that when you have um, a column with um, text, you can convert the text to uh, vectors. That way, you can use that for your um, algorithms. So if you're familiar with Pandas or Scikit-learn, the syntax uh, for H2O is going to be very familiar. You can see here in the first one, um, when we read the data with a pandas, you usually do uh, that read uh, underscore CSV. You provide the data path. For H2O, you will use the import underscore file and provide the data path. Um, and you, you don't have to specify the data type. Uh, H2O will recognize it for you. So I know in pandas, you have to do read underscore CSV or Excel. But uh, SUO allows you to just import the file without the need to um, specify. Um, and also, you can see the dot .describe function. We, uh, it's also um, in SUO uh, as well as the mean. And you can go through all this um, later on if you want. But uh, I want to focus or show you also the uh, building a model. Uh, this is the way you will build a random forest in scikit-learn. So you usually call the classifier, and then um, you define the number of estimators that you want, and then you use the fit, uh, the fit function. And you provide the X frame and the Y frame. In, in the side of H2O, you import the, or you bring in the, or you call the, uh, the classifier, the random forest, and you specify as well the parameter number of trees, which is the same as the number of estimators. And then you use a, a train uh, function. And then you pass your x and y and your train frame. Your x and y don't have to be um, uh, data frames. It's just the strings of, um, of the names, or a list of the names that you want for your x and your y. And you will see this uh, when we do the hands-on part. Uh, and then you have the predictions. You, you, you see we have the same, um, the same function. And to retrieve the metrics, you also do, um, you can do a model performance. And if you have a test set, you, you assign it to it. And then you, print, you can print uh, various uh, metrics, such as the AUC, for example, log loss. And uh, those are for classifications. And you can also do uh, RMSC and MAE. And we'll be doing some of this uh, in the hands-on part. So a little example of, of how um, you read the data into the H2O. First, the Python user will use the import file, as I mentioned before. And then the Python client will make an HTTP call to the H2O cluster. And here you can see that um, to write, uh, you, we have an SUO cluster with three nodes, and when when you make the request, um, they all three will try to bring in the data, and this will happen in parallel. That way, um, everything is um, working at the same time. And once you have the data in your cluster, um, the Python client will have a pointer, and what we see in Python will be a data frame, but in the actual closer will be distributed. So uh, feel free to stop me at any point with questions uh, or comments. So with this um, uh, short introduction to SUO, I want to talk about um, AutoML. So some aspects of uh, machine learning that can be automated are data prep, model generation, and ensembles. For data prep, we have um, feature engineering, data munging, and all the preparation that you usually do to your data before fitting it to the model. And then we have the model generation, where you choose your model, you tune it, and, and then you go to the ensembles. Um, if you're familiar with ensembles, um, you will know that most of the time, they outperform single models because this is a combination of various models. So uh, for example, you can have an ensemble with a, a linear model, a uh, decision tree, and maybe a deep learning model. So, and that will usually uh, perform better than just a single algorithm. 
So a little bit more uh, details about the data processing. We have um, uh, imputation, one hot encoding, uh, standardization, feature selection, such as PCA, target encoding. We also have, for the model generation, as, as I said, you, you do hyperparameter tuning. You can do Cartesian grid search or uh, random grid search. Um, and all these um, ways to find the perfect, um, or not the perfect, but uh, the most uh, accurate model. And then you have the ensembles. Um, here we see two, two different um, uh, ensembles. Uh, one is the stacking, which is uh, what SUO does. And this is, um, pretty much brings all the, um, the algorithms together and um, with uh, another uh, meta learning, it does, uh, it trains them and it doing kind of like um, 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 machine learning within machine learning. And then the ensemble selection is just um, adding or removing um, the models to until you see uh, uh, that the performance improves. So with this in mind, um, I want to talk a little bit about the goals of AutoML. So um, the goals are to train the best models in the least amount of time, and also to reduce human effort and expertise required in machine learning. Um, these two goals are very, like, they go by hand, because when you're trying to tune a model, you will usually spend some time uh, trying to, um, say, I'm thinking about a random forest, say you, you'll have to tune the number of trees, uh, the depth, and, and if you're a data scientist, then you might know which parameters to tune, right? But if you don't really know much about the algorithm, it, it will be hard. It will, you will spend a lot of time and maybe you won't get like a very good result. But AutoML will uh, train the models for you and actually give them to you. That way you can do the statistical analysis at the end. Um, so with this also, um, AutoML um, improves the performance of machine learning models, as I said uh, before, because it does um, uh, the grid search and tuning the models for you. And the last one, which um, I consider a very important one, to increase reproducibility and to establish a baseline, a baseline for scientific research. So some people might use AutoML to, they will train it for some time and they will get the best model and from there do a local grid search. So that way you further improve the uh, performance of your model or you can do just uh, give it enough time to your AutoML and use that for, for, your, for your model. So the SUO AutoML pipeline, it's as uh, follow, it uh, provides a light data preparation. Um, it also does the model generation for you, uh, as well as the stack ensembles, and I'll be talking a little bit details about this. So we impute missing data, uh, standardized numeric features, and what and code uh, categorical features. So this is not just for AutoML, but uh, this is in general for all the algorithms in SUO. So every time you do, you use uh, SUO with uh, any algorithm, uh, this is being done automatically for you. And then we have the model generation and AutoML will explore different algorithms such as GLMs, random forests, GBMs, uh, deep neural networks, and also uh, XGBoost. Um, it does uh, perform random grid search over a um, high parameter, uh, over a hyperparameter space. So they use, uh, it's a set um, a space that it's already defined. So um, it will look for the, it will try to tune the important um, parameters based on the, uh, on your data set. And we also use early stopping rules for uh, models and the grid. So if AutoML sees that, uh, it, the metric is not improving, it will just stop even if you give it like um, uh, too much time. So, this, and lastly, the stack ensembles. Um, uh, AutoML creates two more uh, models in, uh, on top of the models that you want to create. One is a stack ensemble of all models. So say if your AutoML has 10 models, uh, at the end, you will have 12 because you will create two model, two more stack ensembles, and one will be con uh, will, will have all the models in your um, AutoML, and then 
you have uh, the best model for each algorithm, or the best, yeah, the best model for each algorithm. So meaning that if you give it enough time to train uh, GBM, uh, Exibus, uh, model, uh, deep learning, you will see all of this in 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 this stacked ensemble, and we will see this uh, right now in our in the um, hands-on part. So, uh, short recap: we have uh, for RML, we have base, basic data processing, as in all algos. Uh, RML trains a random grid search of GBMs, uh, deep neural networks, uh, GLMs, Exibus, and and also does individual models um, tuning with uh, cross-validation. So cross-validation is also uh, done automatically for you. You don't have to uh, specify anything. Uh, and this is used for the stacked ensembles as well. And here you get the all the all models ensemble and and the best of family ensemble. And we also return or RML will return a leaderboard with all the models and all the models can be easily exported to production. Uh, this is done with the Mojo and Pojo, as I mentioned before. Um, are there any questions? Yes? So that's done uh, with the um, uh, with the hyperparameter search that uh, is done with the uh, um, with the already set uh, grid search um, that it's been already coded into the um, yeah. well we also we're doing also um, uh, cross validation so that also helps you uh, make sure that um, the model is not overfitting. So. Oh, we're uh, we don't we're not we don't have a time series uh, at this point for RML. Yes. Um, any any more questions? Yes. Um, I will have to get back to you, um, but yeah, we do have um, uh, different cloud integrations, as I mentioned before. So, um, uh, SUO does work with uh, um, iCloud, uh, AWS, and uh, Microsoft Azure. So, um, yeah, um, are there uh, so so? Here are some benchmarks for our RML and um, H2O. So if you want, uh, once, you, once you get the slides, you, you can visit them. And these are for the open source. So you don't have to trust me. Uh, you can go to these uh, benchmarks and see the, the result for yourself. And here is uh, some uh, training uh, material. Uh, some tutorials and documentation that uh, might be helpful if you want to look at it. So let's get to the hands-on part. So let's let's go to um, to uh, Aquarium uh, slash login. So I will ask you if you can create uh, an account, uh, and don't worry, this is. Uh, this just for an online environment that you, you we will be using. Um, so the link is um, this one right here. Can you see it? Yes. Uh, Aquarium.suo.ai uh, slash login. So it's aquarium.suo.ai slash login. So once you log in, is everyone um, at the aquarium page? Yes? OK. So uh, one more thing. Um, I will ask you to go to this um, repo on GitHub. Um, the link is github.com uh, slash frankjva uh, slash suo dash tutorials. And we will download 
the uh, the Jupyter notebook from there. So, uh, yes, so this link right here. So github.com slash frankjva slash h2o dash tutorials. So, so if, you, if you're there, uh, I'll ask you to go to the introduction to machine learning. And then you, you will do a right click on raw and save link as. So once again, um, once you're in the introduction to machine learning with SUO part three, um, click on raw and save link as. And it will give you the option to download it and just choose um, somewhere where you can find it easily because we're going to upload this um, to the aquarium environment right now. So is everyone with me? Do you have the file? Yes, okay. Um, so let's go to, well, let me just do it too. So, um, I'll save it in my desktop and I'll save it. So once you're in Aquarium, uh, click on Browse Labs. Uh, so when you click on Browse Labs, go all the way down to um, the lab ID 13. And click on View Details. So um, once again, uh, once you're in the labs, go all the way down to lab ID 13, which is called SUO.ai coursework, and click on view details and start a lab. So when you start the lab, um, you'll be able to access a Jupyter uh, URL. So click on it, and it will open the environment for you. Yes, so use H2O, H2O, um, uh, again, O as uh, the letter O and not zero. So, no, it's just uh, regular, it's just lowercase, it's just H2O for the token. And you should have access now. Is everyone with me in the Jupyter notebook now? Yes? OK, good. So we're going to upload the file. So in the right, in your right hand side, um, uh, next to new, do upload file. And look for the file that we just downloaded. And open it. And then just do upload. So I'll give you a few seconds. So is everyone with me? Can we continue? Yes. Okay. So click on the uh, oops, click on the uh, Jupyter notebook that we just uh, uploaded, and it should take us to the instance. Yes. So uh, if you're familiar with uh, Jupyter notebook, um, we'll just be running this uh, notebook with the Shift Enter. So this part is going to be really easy for you, uh, but the next part um, will be more interesting. <laughs> you will be doing more clicking, actually. So let's run the first line. Um, in the first line, we're just importing some libraries that we will be using. Uh, we're not going to be using everything in detail, but um, uh, we are doing some plots. So run the second line. And this will check if uh, if we if the environment if we're in, uh, in the aquarium. And the third line um, should open, or it should in, in open your instance. So so we're just initializing our SQL closer. And was everyone able to get to the third cell with no errors? 
So while we get there, um, here is the cluster information that um, that uh, SUO will provide uh, pro provide you. So um, here are some basic, uh, just how um, how much time it has been running, um, the version of SUO, um, how many nodes. Um, in the presentation, I show you um, a cluster with three, but right now we're just doing one. Um, we have uh, uh, 14 gigs of memory, and we have 16 cores that are we're going to be using. And this is all in the environment. And and so if we're all there, um, uh, we are going to import the file. So run the next cell. And right here we have the our file in uh, S3 bucket. So we're just providing the link. And as you can see, we're using the import file command. And it will just bring the data. So we're using a data set that comes from the Freddie Mac and contains 20 years of um, mortgage history. And each sample represents a loan. And this each loan has a different type of uh, um, all these columns, which include a credit score, uh, the first payment date, um, some interest rate. Um, also, if you, you can scroll, uh, if you run the fifth cell, um, you can scroll down to, to all the way to the right, and you will see a service name, if it's been prepaid or if it's called delinquent. So uh, in this tutorial, um, we're going to be using AutoML to, to predict if a loan will be uh, delinquent or not. And we'll also be doing a regression case, uh, which will be predicting the interest rate. Um, and we'll see uh, more details about it. So is everyone with me? at this point yes i will assume yes okay so next uh, uh, oh by the way this is the head command this is the same that uh, you see in in pandas it will display the first 10 rows for you and you can change the number inside uh, that way you, you can print uh, how many rows that you want we also have the describe which will give you uh, an, a statistical analysis or uh, a short a statistical summary of your of your data set as you can see here, um, this data set has about 50,000 column uh, rows, I'm sorry, and 27 columns. And here you can see the type of uh, each uh, column, the minimum value, the mean, the max, uh, the standard deviation, the zeros, in, and the missing values. So, and also you get the first 10 uh, columns with this command. So let's take a close look to the uh, delinquent column and we're just um, doing the, this is the name of our uh, frame, SUO frame, and we are accessing the delinquent column right here with this command. And we're just printing a table. So this gives us the distribution. So as you can see, most, most um, loans in this case are good loans or are not delinquent. Uh, and just a very few percentage is um, it's, uh, it's labeled as true. And this is means that uh, we have a very imbalanced data set. So uh, we will see something that uh, might help our predictions uh, when we do the AutoML. So next, um, let's take a look at the interest rate as well. And as you can see, we're doing the same thing. It's just that now we're accessing the or original interest rate, and we're doing the histogram at the end. Yes? Well, well RML will do something that has a, it will sample uh, differently, but um, it won't solve the entire problem. So more advanced feature engineering or more data prep will be um, uh, needed. But in this tutorial, um, we just want to uh, show the AutoML function. So, so maybe the result won't be the perfect or the best results, but uh, you will see the capabilities of our AutoML. So does that answer your question? Yes, so, so yeah, so so for some some of the uh, for the numbers, uh, the missing values um, 
uh, uh, the SUO uses um, the mean value for those. And for categorical uh, values, it will use, um, it will make them as a new category. So um, it won't see the missing value as uh, something that is missing data, but it will see it as, as uh, something that is left uh, uh, like that on purpose. So is, does that answer your question? Yes, okay. So, so we will split the data set uh, into two frames. We'll do a train and test. And you can see this um, uh, very simple. We're using the split frame command. And the way we specify the ratio, um, it's inside, inside brackets. And we, can we just have to show one of them, which is the, uh, um, the percentage for our train set. So we are giving 80% of the data set to the train frame and 20% uh, for the test set. And we are also um, specifying the seed just for our reproducibility purposes. And here, the next line, you can print the distribution. So we see that we, also, we have almost 40,000 rows for our training set and about 10,000 for our test set. So we'll be using that for, for, to train our RML. And this is where we will define our Y and X values. So as I said before, you don't have to pass the entire, um, you don't have to split your, your training or test set into X and Y frame. You will just um, give the name of the columns to the algorithm and they will recognize it for you. For example, we're doing Y is equals to uh, delinquent. And for X, we're doing all of the column except this four. So we're ignoring the response. Uh, also prepaid because this is a clear indication that uh, if a loan will be delinquent or not. And as well as a prepay prepayment penalty. And the product type is just a constant column, so it won't uh, help at all. So if you run it, um, it will create these two um, variables for you, your y and your x. And then we can print one more time the, the distribution in, in the test. Uh, so to make sure that um, the, the test, the split function actually uh, tries to have the same distribution as uh, the original data set. If you remember um, right here, we have about 3.6%, uh, but now we have about 3.9, almost 4%. So you can see it's very close, but the, uh, um, the labels, the true labels are very, uh, it's very, a very small amount. So, so with that, let's run um, our RML and we'll give it five, min five minutes. So while that's running, um, I will do some explanation and take more questions if you have any. So there are several uh, parameters that you can set that you don't have to. Um, the only required ones are a, your X, your Y in the training uh, frame for, for, the, for the train uh, function. For the item mode, you can run the, the default one, but the default one runs for an hour. Um, and right now we just want to, um, I just want to get to show you all the, um, all, all these functions for RML. So um, we're just doing five, five minutes or 300 seconds. Then we can also uh, specify the seed. Uh, we can give it a project name that way it's easy to retrieve it after. And here's the command that I was talking about the balance classes. So um, we're setting this to true. Excuse me. And uh, again, for the train, we just have your X, your Y, and a train frame. We can have a leaderboard frame, and what it will do, it will sort your leaderboard based on the, uh, that frame or our test frame. But um, I want to show you first the, uh, the, the leaderboard with the cross-validation scores, and then we'll, we'll take a closer look at the, um, the model performance in, uh, based on the test set. So while this is um, running, uh, are there any questions? 
Yes. So, so the way it does it, I will um, oversample the minority class or undersample. So you can specify this. In this case, we haven't done that. We're just letting uh, the SUO uh, do it for itself. But um, if you wanted to get more accurate and do that, you will have to um, try to find it for yourself. You, you will specify how you want to sample it. And, and also, you have um, um, another command, which is to how, how much more you want the data set to, to grow, like your data frame. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, in the slides, I showed the, uh, the benchmark. And that's, uh, if I can go back. Look, yes, it was right here. Yes, the benchmark. So here, this AutoML uh, has a comparison of all these uh, AutoML open sources. So um, feel free to go over it. And it has um, the comparison between all this uh, AutoML and how uh, SUO performs. Yes. Any any more questions? I think I saw one in the back. Mm, no. Okay. So um, there, uh, just want to mention some other uh, parameters that you can set, but you don't have to. As I said, uh, um, you can run your RML as default, and or also just restrict the time. That way, it won't take uh, forever. But uh, you can have a validation frame, a leaderboard frame. You can also have ignore columns or, or um, our sort metric. And we, we will have actually that one in the next uh, 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 algorithm. We also have uh, exclude algos and include algos. So in case you want to make sure that uh, and a specific algorithm is included, you will use include algo and write the name of uh, the algorithm that you want. Or if you just want to exclude um, an algorithm, you will just specify that too. Say um, say you you don't like um, deep neural networks because they take longer to train. Then you can just exclude them from your RML. Yes. Yeah. So uh, SUO does it uh, for you. So uh, when when you get your your data, you can. Um, have it as a, as a, um, uh, so go back to, see if we go back to the, um, our describe, you can see the, uh, the type. And this uh, enum is the, uh, what um, SUO calls the uh, categorical features. So for right now, we're just doing um, delinquent, which is uh, true and false. So, so that's, So, so as I said, everything is uh, um, in the in the issue closer. So I personally haven't experienced that yet. But um, um, since everything is done in the um, um, in the memory, if you give it if you give enough memory to your closer, then you won't have any problem. Oh, it's one hot encoding. Yes. Sorry. Yes? Yeah, so, so in, in this RML, there is no feature engineering. Uh, it, it still hasn't been implemented. So um, any advanced uh, data manipulation or feature engineering will have to be done by you, uh, by the user. And then you will just give it to the model. So it's it's done. So if everyone's with me, we can print the leaderboard now. And you will see that we have uh, several models that were trained in just five minutes. So the 
The best model is the stack ensemble, as I mentioned before, of the best of family, which means that it will have one of each, um, each of these um, models in it. So again, for, for the leaderboard, you just do your model, that leaderboard, uh, and that will print it. Um, but in here, we're doing uh, two lines. We're doing two lines just to make sure that we print all the models that uh, were trained for RML. So you can see that um, the, the first XGBoost um, did uh, real, uh, bad uh, with an AUC of 0.63, but the stacked ensemble, which combines um, all those, uh, the best model from each family is doing uh, uh, much better than that. So let's take a, a close look to the stacked ensemble uh, the best of family, which was our best model. So here we're just retrieving, uh, getting the model's ID. So if you run it, um, at the end, uh, you will see this, uh, all the, the models that are part of the stacked ensemble. So we have model like this, and then um, we just check for a stacked ensemble. And right here, we're just plotting our actually printing the coefficients. So you can see that this stacked ensemble, best of family has an, the XGBoost, has a GLM, a GBM, a deep learning, uh, extreme random forest, and uh, distributed random forest, I'm sorry, and extreme ran randomized uh, trees, which is just um, another form of a uh, random forest. And we can plot it. So if you run the next line, we will see that the XGBoost underscore three is the model that is most um, helpful for um, this stacked ensemble, followed by the GLM and the deep learning. And lastly, the, the DRF, the, um, the XRT and the GBM are not really uh, contributing too much. So here's how we do the model performance based on the test set. So, um, if you run it, you will see that um, what we're doing here, we, we're taking the leader from our leaderboard. Uh, this is just the, the model that we um, name it. You can see it right here, yes. So the uh, AML, then leader, and then the uh, function is model performance. And we're given uh, the test set because we want to see how it performed on the test set that uh, we set apart at the beginning. So. Since this is a classification problem, we can take a look at the AUC and also the log loss. So you can see that the AUC is 82.3 compared to the um, 85 that we see from the uh, cross-validation. So the cross-validation actually reflects, um, we can say that it reflects the, um, the score from, um, from uh, unseen data. Um, but then we also have to look at the confusion matrix because I say, as I said, um, the, uh, the data was, um, heavily imbalanced and we can see the reflection in here because, uh, the error for the true label is 0.69. So it's quite high, but we can see that the false is 0 0.03, um, and overall is 0 0.05. So about 5%. So it will depend on what your application is. Here you can see all the maximum metrics, uh, the respective thresholds. Um, so if you're trying to maximize uh, the F1, you will use this, this value. Or if you were trying to, if you just care about maximizing the accuracy, um, this model can give you a max uh, accuracy of 0.96 with this threshold. And and so on. This varies with the um, with the with your applications, as I said. So if you wanted to um, um, maximize any of this, uh, depending on your application, you will, you can just change your uh, your thresholds. We also get um, a gains and lift table as part of the summary, and we can also plot the ROC curve. Um, and here we see the AUC value that we got before. Um, 
and this is just a, a nice representation that way we can see how um, the model is doing and it was it's easy for us to deduce that the AUC is 82 is in, and it's no higher because of the imbalance uh, data set. We can also do predictions. So if we run this one, you will see the um, you will see a table, and you will see two probabilities. You will see a probability of being false and of being true. And then the first column it's the predict, so or your prediction, and this this um, this prediction is based on the threshold that maximizes the F1. So uh, up here we can see that the threshold for that maximizes F1 is 0.12, about 0.13. So if the tr true label were to be higher than that threshold, uh, the prediction would be true. So. Um, So, so you can you uh, SQL lets you um, add custom scores, so you can bring that. So uh, I, I I don't I personally don't know how you write the function for money, right? But you um, you can do it in SQL. You can bring uh, 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 custom scores. Uh, any more questions? Yes. Uh, so we will see that uh, in the regression case, yeah. So, so, um, so this is what I wanted to cover for the classification. I know um, we went really fast, but uh, I wanted to cover like most of this material. But it, does anyone have um, more questions? Yes. For, for, for what? I'm sorry. Um, w w is that kind of like the the stopping metric? Would would you consider that, or, or no? Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll move on then to the regression use case. Um, again, we can see the uh, the same uh, the same same syntax. We're just uh, defining our y and our x, and we're at this time or at this point we're ignoring more column because uh, when we're trying to predict the interest rate. Uh, we wouldn't have all this uh, all this information when trying to give uh, an interest rate for a loan. So if you run it, uh, you can also. Oops. Yes. yes. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. Okay. Okay, so so here we have our x, our y, and our x. So 
these are all the columns that are going to be part of our predictor. And let's run it one more time. So right now we're going to be using um, a regression and see how we didn't have to specify anything uh, to tell it, oh, do a regression or do a classification because um, uh, H2O actually, or AutoML um, will, um, will deduce this from, from your response column. So if you have a category categorical um, uh, response, then it will do a classification. But if you have a, an int, it will do a regression. Uh, was there an, a question? No, OK. So so you see how in right now we're doing um, uh, the restriction now is 10 models instead of uh, five minutes. So this is what you can do if you just want to uh, explore uh, the number of models instead of giving, giving it a time, you can do so too. So we don't have to specify the uh, the time anymore, but we're specifying. I just want 10 models, and, and that's it. So as I mentioned before, uh, we will get the 10 models, and then we'll get two stacked ensembles. Um, again, we're specifying the seed. We have the project name, and we're doing a stopping metric. Uh, so meaning that if the RMSE does not improve, um, we will just stop uh, training the model. And then the sort metric, and this is for the leaderboard. So we'll get the leaderboard sorted based on the RMSE. And again, um, we're just giving it the, the X, the Y, and the training. So are there any questions? So if we don't have any questions, uh, we'll, we'll wait a little bit. This will take about five minutes, too, same as the first one. Uh, yes, let me look for it. So here you have the documentation. Uh, So here you have the custom metric function. <laughs> yes, no problem. So, so we have the AutoML uh, here. You can find uh, right here. So in the documentation, there is a, a lot of information that you can find. So if you if you wanted to know all the parameters that you can change, here is um, here are they all of them and they have a, a short description for you to um, study them uh, and also um, here are examples that you can use and I just want to show you here um, like the models that it trains yes oh I'm sorry sorry is that better yeah so so the frequent, frequently asked questions. Here um, tells, tells you um, in details which models are, are being trained. So um, you will get three pre-specified XDBoos, uh, GBMs, and then GLMs. And you can go through, through this, but this is just telling you which algorithms are going to be trained when you um, train the, the AutoML. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Okay. So I can see it now, but yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So it's the uh, the uh, it's in here. It's in the in our. This is the um, the documentation page. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, so so do you have any any more questions? So while we yes. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so so did you get to this uh to this part of the yeah, yeah. yeah, so so what's uh so I'm sorry, what's your question? Um oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, um this is where uh this will tell you how um um the missing data is handled in SUO. So, any more questions? Uh, yes? Yes, so as I mentioned before, we have the word to vec. Um, and if we go to, um, to algorithms, you will see, let me just show you right here. So word to vec. Um, this will transform the text into vectors that um, your algorithm can use to train. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Oh, you want me to do it right now? Oh, yes, 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 that's right. So we have... Um, in, in the slides, so it's done. So here are uh, a, very, a lot of tutorials. So once you receive the slides, feel free to, to check all these uh, links and you will find all types of um, tutorials. And there are some, uh, some tutorials on NLP as well. So you can check that out. And uh, I think it's done, so, um, so um, has anyone Thing? Okay, sorry. Um, so if we go back to the Jupyter Notebook, uh, um, we will print the leaderboard again. And we see that the stacked ensemble, again, uh, outperformed the, uh, the other models. But we see that um, the XG boost uh, is the, the, the model that follows the um, um, the the stock ensemble, and uh, somebody asked uh, was asking about the how to access a uh, different model. So here is uh, one way that you can do it. So you will get all the model like this uh, from your leaderboard, and then you will specify it. So in this case, I'm trying I'm retrieving the XGBoost one, which was this uh, model right here. So I just changed it, and and to um, elaborate a little bit more on this, we can, uh, and also uh, in the slide, I mentioned that AutoML can, use, can be used to establish a baseline. So in this case, say we're interested in, into this XGBoost, right? So we can print this, uh, all, all these uh, parameters, and we can see that the, the default value was 50, but it actually changed to 162. And the max depth changed from six to ten. Uh, the learn rate also changed as well as the sample rate. Um, so this is how um, you could actually do a lo local search. So say you already saw that the XC boost um, did really good uh, with these values. So maybe you can do um, uh, a random or a Cartesian uh, grid search for values maybe close to that the max depth, close to um, uh, maybe 10. So you can do like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and see if it changes, um, if it still keeps changing, or do you get the best value with that? So that's what I meant at, at the beginning, that you can use it as a baseline. So this is another command to print all of the parameters, although it's not really nice. So. Um, if you really wanted to look at all of them, you can do this. But if you just want to um, check a specific uh, parameters, you can you can also do this. Um, and then, uh, oops, uh, uh, yeah, we can call it. Uh, so it's a Nexi boost, uh, but the name is a GBM. So don't don't be misled by that. Um, this is the same thing that we just did uh, before. Uh, we're getting the summary 
for our, our model performance. And you can do the plot um, for the training, uh, a scoring history. And then again, the model performance based on the test set. You will see the RMSE, the MAE, uh, the MSE and all these values related to the, um, um, to the regression. Uh, this is the same uh, that I was saying, the model performance based on the test set. And we can do predictions as well. And here I'm combining the interest rate with the, uh, with the predictions. That way uh, we can check. So, so this is what I wanted to go over for, for the... Um, for the Python. So are there any questions uh, before I show um, the flow um, interface? So, okay, go back to Aquarium and, and I'll explain a little bit more why I wanted to show um, flow and click on the link uh, with, with flow. Okay, so, so is everyone uh, at the flow? Did it load? Good. So go back to Aquarium and click on the link that says S2O flow URL. And that will take you to the flow. So, so in here, this can be used as a complement to your Jupyter um, notebook because in here you can see everything that we just did right now. So if we do get frames, you can see everything that was created in our Jupyter Notebook. Um, if you scroll down, you will see um, the, the data set that we uh, imported right here. So uh, we, there is a, we, can, we can do splits on it. Um, uh, let's, let's, let's do it real quick um, because it's the last thing I will do. So if you're following me, um, when you do the split frame, just uh, do a ratio 0.8 and 0.2 and call it train and call the second one test and change your seat and do create. So is it too small? So again, um, uh, I went to uh, get frames here in the assistance module get frames, and then you will see all this. Locate the loan level 50k.hex, and click on it, and then you can do a split, and split it into train and, and test uh, with 0.8 ratio, and, and do create. So now we have train and test, right? So you can also retrieve all the models that you did. So if we go back up to the, to the assistance, you can get the models. Um, and here you will see all the models that we, um, we just worked on or that the animal generated. So you have the DRF1, and if you scroll down, you will see all the, um, all the models that we created in, uh, in our Jupyter notebook. So a quick way to, to do AutoML um, in Flow, if you're not very um, familiar with, your, uh, with Python or R, uh, you can even use this, and this is very um, user-friendly. So um, if we give it a name, we, we can just call it AML classifier, and then we'll select a training, a tr or the train set. Uh, the response column was uh, delinquent. Uh, we'll leave these two um, as they are, and then we will ignore um, uh, the prepayment column, product type, and prepay, and you can include the link when, again. Uh, this uh, SUO actually in, ignores it um, automatically, but if you just wanna um, make sure, then you can do this. Then select for your leaderboard frame, I'm sorry, for the leaderboard frame, select the test, uh, click on balance classes, and you can leave it empty, and this is, these are the, um, the parameters that I was saying, uh, mentioned it before. This is the class sampling factor. So you will sample, um, you will look for these values to improve your um, your your performance. And here you, you can exclude the algos. 
And let's just run it for um, for two minutes because we're running out of time. So 120 seconds. Uh, let's leave the early stopping on auto, the leaderboard, and everything can be left the same. And just do 42 for the seed again and build the model. So right now you will see that auto model is running. And this is doing the same thing that we just did in Python, but it's doing it in, in Flow. And as I said before, uh, this can be used as a complement to, to, to your, um, uh, your Jupyter, because you can create the model in Jupyter and just explore all the outputs in here. And we'll see this in a bit once uh, this is done, the two minutes. So any questions in here in the flow? Yes? Oh, um, uh, try to, it didn't work? Oh, it didn't work for you? Um, so, so, so when you launch, uh, or when you initialize the, um, the cluster, uh, uh, did you get something similar to this or did you get uh, an extra uh, message? Oh, um, okay, so that probably was uh, um, uh, something with the initialization. So if you um, uh, we won't have time, but uh, but if you if you start the lab again, uh, you can end the lab and start it and just uh, initialize your cluster. So once you get this, you should be um, ready uh, or your flow. Um, a link should work. Um, I'm not really sure why it didn't work, but uh, um, it probably had to do with the initialization. Um, so, so going back to to flow, um, uh, here we can click on view, and it will um, give us the leaderboard again, and you you will see like all the work that it did and the training. So. the models. Actually, we didn't give it enough time. Okay, so I'll show you with the tag and symbol. So, so this is the model that we created um, before. And um, let me see. Yes. So, so it gives you all this um, output for for each of the models. So you can see all of this. So, so this is what I was referring. So you can, you can actually create the models in Python and just come to your um, Flow instance. You can go over all the parameters. In this case, you will see uh, the base models are all the exibus, and this is all that we saw. And then you will get the ROC curve for um, for your training metrics, and also for the validation one. And if you wanted to to change the criterion, um, you can do so by threshold, or you can do it by um, by uh, metric. So in this case, if we choose the F1, you will see all the actual values of your metrics based on that threshold, and also the confusion matrix based on on, on the same threshold. Um, you can also take a look at the gains and lift table or graph as well as more output, um, the column types, and as you see in Flow, you can you can do all this. And something that I didn't mention in the in the um, in the Jupyter is that you can download the uh, the Mojo and make predictions on a new data set. And this will be um, much much faster. You can just import it and then. Um, in, uh, you can just download it and then import it uh, to your Jupyter or, or 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 to instance, and you can make predictions on your data set. So, um, so this is all I, I wanted to cover. So, I want to give this ten minutes to questions. So, if you have any questions, please feel free to to ask. So. 
Um, so yeah, Just, yes. So yeah, uh, uh, my understanding is that they will send it to you. Yes. So um, any any more questions? So I just want to um, show you something. So if you go to to this um, GitHub repo, um, this tutorial will be posted um, soon on their H2O. So right now um, we'll uh, we'll still working on it. But um, if you want to um, go back and redo it and actually or try the um, the flow part on your own, you can also do it. So this is the repo, so github uh, slash h2oai slash tutorials. Um, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. So in here you will see different um, um, a folder for driverless AI. This is um, uh, the, the commercial platform. But uh, here we have the tutorials for h2o. Right now we only have one, but um, uh, in maybe like in two weeks, we'll have the AutoML tutorial and a regression use case tutorial as well. So feel free to check this out. Um, we have um, a kind of, in these tutorials, you will be able to follow it and maybe do it on your own machine if you want. But you can also use Aquarium whenever you want. Uh, now that you have your account, you can just start the labs and um, and do what we just did today. So. So, any questions? Yes. Um, I'm not familiar with that. Sorry. Uh, I, So, so, so here's a benchmark. So um, I can tell you, um, I can give you my opinion, but uh, here's the benchmark, and you can uh, actually click on it once you receive it, and you will see how um, um, how this person goes into details about um, all the results and 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 the comparison between uh, our H2O and other platforms. Huh? So, so H2O provides you uh, with high performance and also very uh, accurate models. So um, um, I just don't, don't want to say uh, that these are the best, but this is, uh, H2O is one of the leading um, uh, machine learning platforms right now. So, so you can see, um, so going back to the uh, benchmark now that you, um, that you mentioned it. So in this uh, specific case, uh, H2O was faster, and also um, it was the second most accurate um, in the uh, in this uh, in this ex specific experiment. So um, feel free to go over this document and uh, and decide. Uh, so I saw two more questions. Uh, yes. Um, what do you mean exactly? Um, so, like, if you want to ensure that, um, let's say data points coming from the same person aren't included in both the training and the output, you can add uh, grouping variables to make sure the same result in one or the other. Uh, I'm not very familiar with that, but um, I haven't seen that uh, in in the. Uh, in the in the um, in the algorithm so far, so, so. yes. So I personally haven't done that yet, but uh, I I can get back to you on that. So, any more questions? Yes. 
Yes. Um, yeah, so, uh, did you get to this page? Okay. So, so we do have, um, um, in the documentation, you can look for Java, and this is one of the things that um, um, you will see. Sorry, sir. Um, um, so here's the documentation for the Java, so I'm pretty sure it should be. Um, uh, yes. Just to see if it loads. But yeah, we do provide the documentation. So it will be right here. So here you, you will have, this is all the information that we have on that. Yeah, so um, yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure if we have a um, uh, very detailed documentation on Java at this point, but um, uh, if, if you reach out to me, I can um, look for this uh, information with our um, uh, engineers, and uh, I can get back to you on this. But this is what we have. Um, this uh, you can find some information here in the documentation section. So, any last question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can. So, I think that's it. So, yeah, we're done. Thank you.